How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Black Metal Rebellion. I'm your host Jesse Morgan and I'm going to be doing kind of a, a redux or kind of a, a redo of my Metal Origins video that I did a while back. Uh, I believe it was a Jesse Talks Metal video, uh, but that was quite a bit ago. Uh, I've got a lot more subscribers since then. I really appreciate you guys for subscribing by the way and coming here and joining me uh, and checking out all things metal. Uh, but yeah, I was tagged by Gnarly Charlie, a uh, dude I'm subscribed to, and I'm sure he's subscribed to me. Uh, he's got a, quite a few videos out now, uh, probably upwards around 20, close to there. Uh, really good dude, definitely go into the description box below and check him out, because I'm going to link his uh, original video below. Um, but yeah, he's kind of asked, how did you first start getting into metal, and what was your journey uh, into metalhood um, and as far back as I can remember uh, I've always kind of had metal music uh, around me and playing and stuff like that uh, because even as far back as six or seven years old my my mom and dad both listened to you know different forms of metal um, or hard rock and when I was I, really really young like I said, probably around six I, or seven, I remember hearing stuff like Black Sabbath, Ozzy, Alice Cooper, ACDC, Deep Purple, and stuff like that being played around, played around me and stuff like that. And it, uh, it was definitely very interesting to me, especially at that age, because it was kind of spooky, especially some of the, like, the earlier Black Sabbath stuff. Um being that age not really hearing you know that kind of stuff before it definitely was different and very unique and interesting and dark creepy sounding to me um but as i got older uh, i started meeting other people in uh you know my family and french friendship circles and stuff that were listening to metal uh, and I kind of started hearing things uh, in like the thrash genres and stuff like that. So like Megadeth, Metallica, Anthrax, and whatnot. And then as I got older, I started, you know, trying to seek out music for myself and acquire some. And how I first started getting into like acquiring my own, uh, you know, music on CD or tape or whatever... Uh, it was, I think, first through this ordering place called Columbia House. Uh, and they'd send you, like, a, a little pamphlet, and they'd send you a bunch of titles in it, and you'd kind of look through and see what you like. I don't know if it even told you what genre they were. It just uh, would show you the album cover and give you the name of the band, and you'd just kind of be like, uh, okay, I think I like this. Um, I think it maybe had a section for, like, metal, hard rock, and classic rock stuff like that but they didn't really specify what genre or subgenre of metal it was i just kind of pick and point out what i wanted and maybe order one or two um with my you know allowance money or chore money because i i earn money by doing dishes and mowing the lawn and you know cleaning up around the house and different things like that i would earn like you know two two three four or five bucks here or there depending on what uh, you know, I decided to do, um, so that's how I kind of got into ordering my own music, I believe I was probably around, goodness, uh, 11 or 12 at the age they started doing that, and then, uh, after that, I kind of started branching off and going into, uh, the local music shop, and that was in Bowmanville, and it was a place called The Zone, run by a guy named Ken Masters, and he had an entire wall of metal uh, on a shelf that he'd feature and get new things in from, as well as like a used uh, CD bin with like different metal and uh, related genres in there. And on occasion, he would recommend different bands to me, uh, like Mashuga, like Six Feet Under, like. Um, Static X, and different things like that. Uh, Nemec. Nemec was one that he always tried to get me to buy, but I never ended up getting around to buying it. Um, but yeah, so anyways, 
Um, I used to buy stuff from that store a lot, get recommended a lot of different kinds of metal from uh, Can, from The Zone, and it kind of grew from there. So it, was, so it started off with like like early kind of just kind of classic metal like Black Sabbath and Ozzy, and if you consider Alice Cooper and Deep Purple Metal, uh, and those two as well. Uh, ACDC, if you consider them metal, maybe you don't, maybe you just consider them hard rock, uh, bands like that, um, or Soundgarden, I think Soundgarden was definitely another one, now looking at my, my list over there, uh, and then I got into high school, um, that w was kind of a thing for me where I was kind of leaning towards the new metal, uh, side of things, so like Disturbed, uh, Slipknot, Mudvayne, Godsmack, if you consider them new metal at all. Um, I want to say Nothing Face, but I don't know if that's the proper band that I'm thinking of. Um, but yeah, so I got into more new metal stuff like that in high school. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I got anything behind me here that uh, really stuck out. Uh, Guns N' Roses was another one that I, that I got into earlier on. Uh, and then stuff like Korn. Still a fairly big fan of Korn, considering. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it went from early stuff like Black Sabbath and whatnot, then to thrash stuff like Metallica and Megadeth, and then to New Metal. And then once I finally actually uh, got around to buying Six Feet Under's uh, Bringer of Blood album, that's kind of what got me into Death Metal. And then I went and got a couple more Six Feet Under albums. And then I found out that Chris Barnes was actually earlier in Cannibal Corpse. So I got the first four Cannibal Corpse albums and really enjoyed those. Um, I did eventually get all the other Corpse Grinder Cannibal Corpse albums up until The Wretched Spawn or Evisceration Plague. But then I just kind of, I don't know, I just I grew out of Corpse Grinder's voice pretty quickly once I started getting into other forms of death metal. And I sold it. Uh, and I, at one point, had Pantera's entire discography, but once I got out of that, that kind of groove metal, if you want to call it that, I don't consider groove metal a thing, but uh, slower thrash metal, I kind of sold all those, sold all of those as well. Um, sold all of my Megadeth collection. Just I kind of grew out of it. Didn't really, you know, see myself listening to it anymore. I wanted to buy more stuff that was kind of in my taste at the time, so it helped me fund buying different death metal. Um, and then post, post high school, I got into more of the, more of the gore grind and slam uh, era kind of death metal type of stuff. And then once I finally got past that and I ended up not being in Diaphasia anymore which was kind of like our Black and Death grind, Black and Death grind band. I eventually got into black metal because I was trying to start up a new band with Nick Legion from Fallen Legion and he wanted to do a black metal band so I figured hey I should probably learn some riffs and uh, dive deeper into black metal because at the time black metal to me was what every new person thinks black metal is for the most part it was Cradle of Filth, Demi Borgir, um, and what, uh, what little I heard of Emperor at the time so that's what I thought black metal was I thought it was just a bunch of keys and synths and tremolos and a bunch of just noise and atmosphere and shit going on didn't really register with me but then i started getting into like the big four like burzum mayhem dark throne immortal and um that kind of definitely changed my mind on things uh especially got going into like even more stuff like um satiricon shooter sargeist horna and just bands like that that kind of branch out from kind of uh, the, the Finnish death metal and the Norwegian death metal, um, Marduk, Watain, and yeah, it just kind of grew and grew and grew. So yeah, that was basically my 
you know, upbringing, high school, and then post high school adult years of being surrounded by a bunch of metal. I never really kind of remember a year or a time where I wasn't in one way, shape, or form surrounded by or listening to metal. It kind of makes me wonder what I may have be I may be listening to today if I hadn't have grew up with parents who listened to pardon me, stuff like Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, Alice Cooper, um A C D C and the likes. Uh, I like my parents did also listen to other stuff too that wasn't metal like Grasshopper and Steppenwolf and Tom Petty and the Moody Blues and stuff but that didn't really do much for me it was good music and I enjoyed it but metal was definitely where it was at and I couldn't see myself just being satisfied with what they listened to uh, metal wise I was definitely looking for something heavier something faster something a little bit more complicated and a little more emotional, a little bit more in-depth, a little less campy, a little less old sounding, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's really interesting to look back and kind of go, where exactly did I start getting the taste for what is now my, one of my favorite genres of music? And... Here we are today uh, with me loving pretty much slam and black metal the most out of all of the metal genres. Uh, I don't know if I have anyone to tag or to do my metal origins. I I guess I would probably have to tag uh, Evil Ops and maybe Full Metal Ginger. If you two want to do it, that'd be cool. Um... I think maybe Jack's or the Bunny Barn by Jax has already done a video similar to that, and I'm pretty sure Julian Gonzalez has already done a video similar to that. So I'm not going to tag you guys, uh, but if you haven't done one and I'm mistaken, definitely do you know, definitely do do one because they're pretty neat, and I know a lot of people like to know where you know people get into metal and who got you into it and what was the first bands you listened to in the metal genre. That really sparked your interest and set you on your journey. Um, so that's mine. Basically, Black Sabbath and Alice Cooper, and then to Megadeth and Metallica, then to New Metal, and then to Death Metal, and then finally to like Slam and Gore Grind, and then to my last kind of experience of like the most extreme, one of the most extreme genres being black metal. Um, unless you consider like noise grind more extreme, but uh, yeah, black metal was probably like the last one to get on, and my the last genre to arrive at in my musical journey. But I feel it's probably the best, you know, metal genre because it has so many other subgenres within it being. DSBM, atmospheric black metal, symphonic black metal, melodic black metal. Um, you know, it's even got stuff like post and shoegaze versions of black metal, um, ambient stuff like some of Stryborg. So, yeah, I, I still feel the black metal is the best metal genre. Um, hope you enjoyed hearing how I got into metal and my uh, gradual progression into the more extreme. Uh, genres and subgenres. Let me know what some of your uh, stories are in the comment section below. If you do a video, feel free to tag me in it and uh, you know, let me know of its uh, existence out there in the YouTube world. I'll check it out if and when I have time. Uh, I definitely am interested and uh, can always use the shout out because I'm still a pretty small channel considering. <laughs> uh, anyways, enough of that. Uh, before I close up the video, I do want to let you know though, if you really are interested in supporting the channel and you want to keep content coming from me and maybe just get some memorabilia from, you know, the Rebellion, uh, definitely consider getting a Super Slam Bros Brutal Logo shirt or picking up a Drakir demo cassette or CD. There's still some of those left 
as well as maybe supporting my Super Slam Bros distro uh, again by getting a Rectal Depravity CD. Uh, still a bunch of these left for 15 US dollars shipped. Thanks for watching. Much appreciated. For glory, for the rebellion, Slammerella out.